Hello dear T friends from around the world and welcome to a new class with me Stefan Erler from the T-Masters blog and the t-masters.com boutique. Today uh, I thought we'd do another quick um, subject on water and on kettles and how to boil water properly for our tea. This is the most important actually uh, part of tea because uh, tea is 99% water. Water is the mother of tea, as uh, Tea Parker says, and uh, therefore paying attention to water is really essential to making a good tea. Now let's first start with the different possibilities of kettles that we that we have. Now you see most of the time I'm using um, tetsubin, uh, cast iron Japanese um, uh, kettle. It's made of um, we would say raw iron, and um, it has the advantage that it's a little bit porous. It will give a little bit of metallic uh, uh, iron taste that is actually a little bit sweet. And uh, if it's not too much, uh, if you use your um, cast iron regularly, this should not be an overwhelming taste. The problem is if you don't maintain it properly and uh, then it uh, this this taste can be too strong but if you use it regularly usually it's a, it's a normal and a sweet taste that uh, combines well with uh, with water uh, of course the, you also have um, steel uh, kettles this will have a little bit uh, another metallic but a less natural taste uh, in, a, in the very traditional kettles, uh, you also have kettles made of clay and uh, well, depending on the clay uh, and also how often you use, uh, clay will actually have, and it's uh, completely natural, uh, uh, a more earthy uh, taste and earthy flavors, uh, sometimes towards mud, sometimes a bit more towards stone. Uh, but, um, uh, actually, it's uh, due to the, of course, the uh, nature of the material that is used, and um, this maybe is a better uh, combined with a stronger tasting teas, maybe um, also shopur rather than uh, green tea. Here, um, these uh, earthy notes don't combine so well with um, flowery um, scents. That's why I'm not using. Uh, these kind of clay kettles very often. Uh, actually, maybe the, the the very the most neutral and maybe the best material for for tasting would actually be silver uh, silver kettle. This is the most pure metal that you can find, and here this uh, pu uh, purity is so good that you don't actually get to um, taste the uh, silver. Uh, taste and uh, silver is really tasteless but because it is tasteless it lets the water taste uh, wonderful and uh, you don't uh, and the uh, and the metals uh, of the silver will not in, uh, interfere with the sense of the tea other than letting it shine even more okay so uh, here we have uh, done a, a quick overview of the different materials for um, tetsubin of uh, kettles so cast iron which is uh, really very nice and also it's uh, more affordable than, than silver silver of course would be uh, the, the most pure and uh, it's uh, really uh, suitable for all kinds of teas because it's uh, so neutral but especially the lighter teas, the, mo the most fragrant ones, uh, like uh, green tea or high mountain oolongs. Um, the tetsubin is really great for the aftertaste and therefore most of the good teas uh, are really suitable for it. And uh, clay uh, kettles are better for, uh, I would say, more earthy uh, tasting teas like uh, like Chopur. Um, then let's have a, let's review another important thing is the how the water flows um, because uh, you can see there are different types of uh, of spouts for the 
uh, for these kettles. Actually, these two have a, a, a very similar one. Uh, so uh, short and uh, rather large. Uh, let me show you a bit. Uh, it's very, very similar design. But uh, a little bit uh, a larger uh, spout is, um, is important because it will more allow you to vary the strength and uh, how much water you pour. If your spout is um, very thin, and uh, I see it often uh, because people use a, a, a kettle that is made for, uh, for coffee, uh, it will produce a very nice uh, thin uh, um, water flow, but you, it can, it will never be a very large one. So sometimes for, for making tea, you want to be, to, to do it very thin and very uh, uh, slow, but sometimes you want to have uh, more power, more energy, and uh, these a bit larger spouts uh, allow you to have more control, to uh, have uh, different water flows than uh, a very thin one uh, would. Um, and now uh, let me also go to, uh, to one aspect of um, uh, boiling the water uh, that is very important is, as the name says, boiling it. Uh, really going to a full boil, but as Louis says, uh, it should uh, be uh, the water should only make uh, bubbles that are the size of uh, shrimp eyes, not crab eyes or fish eyes. Fish eyes is already too big, these kind of bubbles, and uh, then your water loses its taste. But on the other hand, if there are no bubbles at all, then the water is not warm enough, and uh, this means the tea leaves will not release all the f flavors that they have inside. Now, how do we make sure that uh, we reach the boiling stage when you prepare tea? Now for this, it is very important again to remember the, very f the last lesson I, I taught last week to be very calm, very uh, concentrated, to be focused. And uh, we, I said you use this, uh, you try to go in this state by um, when you preheat your uh, your first uh, vessel, uh, you start to to calm down to, to do it very uh, very slowly, and this attention will help us to know when the water is ready. So actually, the uh, how that uh, so. We will use our ear instead of using our eyes or a thermometer. So the idea is we don't want to um, to be distracted too much by paying attention to um, uh, to the water. So imagine, okay, is uh, traditionally I would have um, my uh, kettle on my. Um, uh, Nilu with uh, with charcoal. Of course, now nowadays this is not so easy to to maintain. So we have uh, I'm using um, an induction plate. So on my induction plate, I am uh, heating my water. When do I know that it reaches the boiling stage? So what I don't want to do is continuously open the lid, look, one, this is, uh, uh, this forces me to, uh, uh, um, to, cho to change a bit position. Uh, it's a bit distracting to, to pay so much attention uh, to, by looking at the water and opening the lid. Uh, the lid might be a bit hot. You have some steam that comes out when you open the lid. Uh, so all this makes you feel uh, uncomfortable uh, when you... However, of course, the very first time that you make your tea, that you boil your water in, um, in a new kettle, you have to do this. To know, you have to look exactly when do the bubbles form and what sound 
does the water make when these bubbles uh, appear? Not yet, not yet. So, and then by, uh, by having this experience once, you try to really engrave this sound in your mind because of course the sound of water that reaches the boiling uh, stage becomes louder and louder and uh, once you recognize, you learn to recognize okay this is the sound that means my water is boiling and then you know without looking that the water is ready and you, you will recognize it because you are focused, you recognize it because one, you have the experience, and also because you are calm and you are focused. And this, this allows you to, to be even more calm because you don't have to, to worry, oh, is my water boiling? Oh, uh, is it time that, oh, I, I, it's too late, it's, uh, it's too much. No, no, you can. Because you have the experience, you know, okay, this sound means not yet. And now, that sound means it's ready. And then you can simply start to preheat. Okay. Uh, a little uh, reminder for last week's. Okay, and now I would pre it again. So, and of course, this is much more comfortable to, uh, to process your hot water just by the ear than imagine if I would use a, now a thermometer. Do, 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 do. Uh, it would not feel comfortable, this would not be traditional. The Louis did not need a thermometer in, in these times. I'm sure all he was using is uh, first, of course, he uses the, the, the his eyesight. Um, also, at that time, he, they did not use kettles. They were, of course, using um, like cold ones. So it was open. It was not. Uh, there was no lid on, on top of it, so it was very easy to to look at the uh, the, the bubbles. But you don't want to open the lid actually of your kettle when you are making tea. You have to rely on uh, your uh, on your ear and your experience. This will make things much more comfortable, relaxed, and uh, and natural. And uh, one more tip is uh, when you use a silver teapot. Here you, you really have to be very very careful because silver teapots, uh, silver kettles, actually, sorry, uh, they transmit uh, their energy, their, their heat very very easily and uh, let me tell you that uh, it happened once to me that uh, it was uh, resting boiling for too long in in tea class with uh, all the students around and uh, I was not careful forgot that it was so hot took it I could not hold it and then I I let it slip out of my hand it burned my my butt <laughs> And uh, I was, uh, it, I felt it for a week, this uh, boiling water, and since then I know, okay, silver kettles are uh, great for water, but they can be a bit dangerous, especially if you forget that uh, they are boiling for, uh, for too long, and uh, therefore it's really important that you know when to stop the boil, and uh, this, when the uh, water is ready, is when you make your tea. Okay, thank you very much. For your attention i hope uh, you learned a few things and see you for another class another week <laughs>